hour of sleep? I sure did. <laughs> Let's just say the extra hour was golden. We have been studying King Solomon for the past couple weeks from 1 Kings. And King Solomon, as we have seen over the past few weeks, was made king over Israel in his father's footstep and was blessed with abundant, lots of wisdom. Under his rule, all of Israel continued to prosper, growing from the successes of his father David and increases in wealth and influence. But today, we will see how Solomon's sin divided a nation. Friends, God takes sin very seriously, but he also gives mercy to those who repent. Do you remember what mercy is? Well, let me tell you, mercy is when God does not give us the punishment that we, you and I, deserve. Just last week, we learned about how Solomon completed the temple and spent time praying to God and dedicating the temple. But things take a turn. And Solomon allows his heart to be led astray from fully devotion to God. His sin not only affected his life, but the whole nation. There are many things in this world that wants our attention. Those things become idols when we give them more importance than we give to God. They divide our hearts from Him. But friends, let's remind our hearts today by praising Him this morning and asking Him to be the center of our hearts. Are you ready? Up on your feet, let's worship Jesus!
of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. So I just want to lift my hands and say that I love Him. I just want to lift my heart in praise. And I want to be thankful. I want to be grateful. I want to remember everything that the Lord has done. I want to be thankful. I want to be grateful. I want to be, I want to be, I want to be. I like to think about the goodness of the Lord. He gives me everything I need and so much more. was wiser and richer than any other king on earth. He loved God and God blessed him. But Solomon, he wanted more. He had many wives from different nations and before long, Solomon wives were able to turn him away from God. Girls and boys, it would be a good time to go and grab your Bibles. You see, Solomon began to worship the false gods that his wives worshipped instead of worshipping the one true God. He built altars on a hill near Jerusalem to worship these idols. Not only that, the people in Israel begin to worship these false gods too. Oh no! And when this happened, God was angry. And God said to Solomon, since you have done this. I will take the kingdom away from you and give it to your servant. You will be the king the rest of your life, but when your son becomes king, he will lose everything except for one tribe. And friends, that is exactly what happened. Solomon had a servant named Jeroboam. One day, a prophet named Ahijah met Jeroboam as he was coming down the road. Ahijah took off his coat and tore it into 12 pieces. How many? 12. Ahijah told Jeroboam, take 10 pieces for yourself. God is going to take the kingdom of Israel away from Solomon. He will let Solomon and his family keep a small part, but you will get the bigger part, 10 tribes. Ahijah said God was going to punish King David's descendants for their unfaithfulness. Unfaithfulness! But their punishment would not last forever. When Solomon died, his son Rehoboam became king. The people did not want to serve a king like Rehoboam because he was a bully. He treated the people so harshly, so they made Jeroboam king. Servant. The kingdom of Israel was now divided. Jeroboam ruled over the northern kingdom of Israel and Solomon's son only ruled over the southern kingdom of Judah. Solomon allowed his heart to worship false gods and his sin divided the kingdom. Friends, as I mentioned earlier, God takes sin seriously. Sin separates us from God and it always, always has consequences. Solomon's sin suffered a consequences and that was God divided the kingdom. But I want you to ask yourself, 
What has led Solomon's heart to turn away from loving only God? And if we look at 1 Kings chapter 11, verse 4, we learn that not only did Solomon have lots of gold, money, but he also had many wives. He married women from tribes that the Lord told the Israelites not to marry. Then his wives began to pull him away from God. Solomon's wives, they worshipped idols and their idolatry influenced Solomon. His heart did not fully love the Lord. Friends, what about you? Who do you surround yourself with? Are they people that encourage you to worship God? Or do they pull you in other directions? But let me ask, are you someone that encourages others to worship God? Or do you pull them in other directions? As we have been studying King Solomon, I don't know if you caught this, but I have been talking about mercy. Our God is merciful. He shows us mercy even though we don't deserve it. Even looking at today's passage or today's story, we see that God shows Solomon mercy. Huh? Well, I thought you wouldn't ask. When did God divide the kingdom? Back to the Bible. Let's look at 1 Kings chapter 11. 11, and I think the verses were 11 to 13. You see, it says, So the Lord said to Solomon, You have chosen not to keep my covenant. You have decided not to obey my rules. I commanded you to do what I told you, but you did not do it. So you can be absolutely sure I will tear the kingdom away from you. I will give it to you, one of your officials. Verse 12, but I will not do that while you are still living. Because of your father, David, I will wait. I will tear the kingdom out of your son's hand. Verse 13, but I will not tear the whole kingdom away from him. I will give him one of the tribes because of my servant, David. I will also do it because of Jerusalem. That is the city I have chosen. Friends, because of God's promise to David, God showed mercy to Solomon. The Lord did not divide the kingdom during Solomon's reign. However, after Solomon's reign, God split the kingdom and left only one tribe, just like he promised to David's family. Boys and girls, sin is serious. Sin is serious. King Solomon said led to the division of the kingdom and God's people needed a better king. And it was through David's family that God would send his own son, Jesus, to be the perfect king over God's people forever. Jesus is greater than Solomon. Jesus brings his people together and leads them back to God. Amen? Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for sending us the perfect King, Jesus. We thank you that you are a merciful God who shows your children mercy and your grace falls afresh on us each day. Holy Spirit, reveal to us our sins so that we may repent and turn away from them daily. Lord, help my friends look to the cross when things pull them away from you because the cross is where we find the evidence of your gracious hand providing for us. Help us to fill our hearts with more of you. We love you so much. And it is in your name we pray. Amen.
my life It's all because of you, all because of you You make me smile, you gave me a new heart Gave me a new heart You make me smile It's all because of you, all because of you All because of you His wealth of grace and mercy, both now and in eternity. If you're looking for wealth, look no further, but look to the cross. The cross is where we find the evidence of God's gracious hand providing for His children. The cross is where we look to to find access to His generous heart for eternity. Receive and rest in the truth that Jesus is the perfect King who brings His people together and leads them back to God. Well then, have a victorious week and I'll see you next week!